This is the Mobile Tech Podcast, brought to you by worldpodcasts.com. Now here's your host, Tank Girl, Miriam Jouar. Hi, and welcome to the Mobile Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Jouar, and today is Wednesday, May 8th, 2019. We're at Google I.O. Day 2, so this is the second show you're getting this week. If you missed the first one, rewind and listen to that. I have a cadre of awesome Android fans on board here. I'm going to go left to right and start with you, Nick. Nick Gray from Fandroid. Yeah. I'm Ryan Hager from Android Police. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm Jason Howell from All About Android. Oh. And there I've gone here from Techno Buffalo. Nice. This is going to be fun, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, day two. Uh, by the way, if you're listening and you hear noise in the background, that's okay. There's sound check happening for the show concert tonight because this is Google I.O. where there's a, basically a big party outdoors. Uh, so don't be panicked. I'll try to remove most of it in, in post. Um, I'm going to kind of just kind of ask you, what, what, let's maybe go around and do a quick one sense of what, are the, what is the thing that really got your interest in I.O.? It can be anything, Pixel 3a, uh, it could be the, the, the Hub Max, Nest Hub Max, oh, that name is terrible, and, mm-hmm. or whatever. So, Nick? Um, I don't know. Honestly, starting with the Pixel 3a, obviously, you know, all of us were excited about new smartphones. So, it's, it's a really great device, but, I mean, we've known about it for so long that it's kind of like, it's here, it's finally here, it's so great to play with the phone finally. Uh, but for me, during the main... Uh, presentation yesterday, looking at the new Google Assistant features, just being able to talk to your phone command after command after command and pretty much do anything you want on your device without ever having to even touch the screen. Freaking amazing. Like, that was I, really cool. I, I, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I was watching that. I was like, is that stage? Like, obviously, it's stage. They, they prepared it perfectly and everything. But well, if I could but do if I could do that or scary. something even similar or remotely close to that, that's freaking amazing. Their first demo, everything was lightning fast and like what they say were over ten times fast. Yeah. The first attempt failed. And they they went they, so fast that nobody quite spotted nobody that noticed actually it, yeah. no matter how good the on device AI and everything else is, it will still fail. Yeah, so the, the one thing, I don't know if a lot of people caught it if they're watching uh, the live stream, but they've essentially taken Google Assistant off the cloud and put it on the device, shrinking it down, I think, from 10 gigabytes, they said, or 100 gigabytes. Yeah, 50 gigs or something? No, it was a half a gigabyte. Oh, yeah. So down to one half gigabyte, putting it directly on the device. So it's doing all the computation directly on the device and never going to the cloud. So you don't have that latency to the cloud to deal with. And that's that's amazing. I think the 80 megabytes is the language. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're right. That's yeah. what I was yeah. remembering. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that, I agree. That's really cool. Um, Ryan, what's your thing? That's uh, and we can come back to this stuff. I'm kind yeah. of basically deciding what our topics are going to be for the show. Uh, so I, it kind of connects with that. The um, thing I'm most excited about isn't really directly Android, but every other talk here is about AI and machine learning and the improvements we've made from art and making machine learning with art. Like we all saw the demo with the uh, live remixing the DJ, which was pretty cool. There have been a lot of other talks uh, over the last two days of uh, art and other ways of using machine learning and reducing bias and models and all sorts of interesting things and bringing more machine learning on device. And a lot of this stuff is just utterly fascinating, even though it's way too technical for us to get into at our site, but it's, it's so cool and I'm really excited for it. Yeah, absolutely. Jason, what do you got? Yeah, oh, I like those. I like the shrinking of all this coming down onto the devices. Um, it's really great. Um, Project Mainline, I, I find pretty pretty interesting. I like yeah. that it's an extension of Treble. Uh-huh. You know, it's Treble the last couple of years. It's come a long way, I think, but it has the potential for so much more. And Project Mainline tells me that they're thinking about what's next with Treble. It's not just, we did this thing and great. Now they're starting to really break apart even more of the system. And that could actually, potentially, uh, really address the the long-standing issue of not being able to get these security updates to phones because manufacturers or carriers get in the way. This is a, kind of a shortcut around that. And I think that's really positive. Most interesting thing about Mainline is the fact that they've already got all the OEMs on board. 
Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, we're pretty much, this is, we're ready. This is. Well, just imagine an OEM go. not having to worry about security updates and patches. Like they have hundreds of thousands or thousands of people on their team trying to get these security patches released and they never do, never on time. You never have to do that again. Like, So is this the thing they announced that updates in the background without rebooting your computer? Yes. Your, yeah. Your, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, exactly. Just want to make sure. Well, so that's not your point. Right. Security updates. Okay. And that's no, not that's, right. That's what they're... Although during the presentation they said that it would work in the background, that's only for um, updates that are being delivered in the form of APKs. Some of them are being delivered in the form of a package called Apex, which does require that the system restart. So there's two different categories. Got it. Huh. Interesting. Well, I mean, that's cool. I think, mm-hmm. I mean, personally, I think, uh, Narav, what, what, what did you, before I start with my thing, what, what do you think is the thing for you for I.O.? I'm torn because there's a few very interesting things. You know, we've talked about Assistant. Incredible. Pixel 3a, I mean, just about every single person is in, on the planet is going to talk about the Pixel 3a for the next four days or however long until we get bored of it. Because <laughs> it's a mid-range phone and we're all way too geeky to be using a mid-range <laughs> exactly. phone. Exactly. Let's be real. I'm actually something I just saw. Android Auto. The redesign to Android Auto is having... Sp- when I lived, until I moved to New York, I spent, I was driving around SF everywhere, and I had a car that had CarPlay and Auto, and CarPlay felt cool. Like, it felt nice, it felt like it was designed well. Auto was missing something. With the redesign of Auto, I think they've done an outstanding job to really reduce the interactions you have on your screen and things like that. They've thought out, if you... It, what it's going to be like when you use, you know, you've got, vi- like, we think, oh, Android Auto, it's all touchscreen. No, you've got everyone from Audi, example, who's all non-touch, it's all using a, a rotary wheel. And you've got some that have these different, the integration the touchpads. The touchpads. So it's really interesting how they've gone about it. I can see that if I'm an Android Auto, like, I don't drive much anymore, but when I do, the new Auto is beyond better than just about anything else you can get. And then coupled with that, the Polestar stuff, which makes me excited that we'll finally get the Android for cars that we've been waiting for for 50 bloody years. But there's one drawback for the new Android Auto, and that is that the standalone experience on the app itself, if you use just the app and not Android Auto, is going away. They're switching to the new Assistant uh, Auto whatever in-car thing. So I Don't blame them, though, because you... how many people are actually going to... I'll take the... the again, we're all geeks. If I, we understand that Android Auto is an app, most people won't download Auto until they're trying to plug it yeah. into a car that prompts them. They're just going to go phone, dock, maps, done. Yeah. So really, it was redundant. Like, as a service... I think it was completely redundant. It's been a lack of discovery. Nobody's yeah. going to well, use it. I, I know a handful reloaded. of people who do use it at times, at times, but most of the time they just open Google Maps and they don't launch the Android Auto they, like they have it because they don't have a head unit or anything like that. But to that point though, they, how many millions of cars are they in already? And they've signed on Toyota this year, which which is the largest car manufacturer in the world. So going forward... Any new car. So Android Auto on your phone, you know, the standalone was really only applicable for anyone who had an older vehicle who yeah, didn't have an exactly. Index. Like going back three years, anyone who has a new car as of three years ago, going into the future, everyone's going to have it built into their system, even on the cheap end. So yeah, it becomes completely redundant. So the Google Assistant thing is still more good, good. more discoverable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, and, and I mean, it's pre-installed on the device. And, so. and it goes aligned with something I discussed with David on the show yesterday, which is, uh, a, you know, Anchor releasing that Rove Bolt adapter, yeah. which basically lets you interact with your phone like it's a Google Home Mini, or sorry, oh, crap. No, the Google the Nest, Nest Mini. The, uh, oh. the, 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 is it Google Nest Mini or is it the Nest Home Mini? I don't know. It will anyway, probably just be. Nest mini. It will actually Nest probably mini. be called, based on the email from Google and announcing Google Nest. The Google Nest Home Mini is where I'm going to peg it. Anyway, and then that's a so whole other. So Home you know, Home I person. think that's another solution. Like, I think I'm not necessarily convinced that you need a, a visual interface 
for 90% of interactions when you're driving in a car. I think the passengers could really enjoy it, like the person mm -hmm. next to you in the passenger seat in the front. But I think as a, as a driver, you know, just being able to either push a button or say, you know, the keyword uh, and talk to the assistant, especially now that the assistant is on device, is going to be, I think, a huge, a huge alternative to using Android Auto. But the thing that got me excited, I, I just still think the Pixel 3a. And I think, I mean, because I like hardware, but I also feel like, yeah, well, exactly. but I also think that, you know, Nirav, you said something interesting, like nobody cares because it's a mid-range. I actually think this is really important that it's a mid-range. Well, oh, let, 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 let me jump we, in. We, well, we don't care. We don't let care. Me, the, for yeah. the general consumer, this is an amazing device. Let me clarify something. We know May is going to have many more releases to come. No need to go into any details. Can you honestly tell me a week from now we're all going to be still talking about the 3A? No. That's where that point came from. But to touch on your point, I do think this is possibly the most important from Android phones as a whole, the most important phone of the year. Yeah. Because it's about to destroy and just completely re make us rethink what an affordable flagship truly is like. Mm -hmm. Just like you would probably have to go back to what I would say the OnePlus One as the first phone that went. Yeah. This Nexus is, Five. No, it wasn't mainstream enough though. Right. Yeah, if you look at the first phone that hit that mainstream, it hit all the right notes. Hit everything and made people go, "Wow, whoa!" Yeah. Sit up, take notice, and look at look at it now. Six years later, that became a segment. In itself, it developed a whole segment. Yes, Honor yeah, in cool. you know in the UK, there were all these other phones that helped towards this goal. The OnePlus One was the first one that went, this is a flagship, but it's affordable. We're calling this an affordable flagship phone. Well, and to that point, marketing typically is what you need to sell a phone. It doesn't matter if it's a good phone or a bad phone. You need marketing to sell a phone. The last couple of days driving in the Bay Area here, I've been seeing a lot of Pixel 3 versus iPhone X camera comparison and showing the night sight and how amazing that is. You know what I saw this morning on the way in? Pixel 3a versus iPhone X night sight. Ooh. And then versus phone X. Oh, yeah. Oh, phone X. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. I love how they do that yeah, because our eyes fill the gaps. But, you, you know? <laughs> but then they also had, uh, they had, again, phone X, right? And then they said, has all the Google apps. Mm -hmm. And then they had uh, Pixel 3a is Google, and then it showed the price difference, $999 versus $399. Consumers are going to eat that up. Yeah. Well, real. I'm not sure they'll eat it up. I mean, I'm, I want to be optimistic, yeah. but the, you have to remember the Pixel brand and the Google brand is still it's a new. small thing. I, it's, I, I have a lot of things to say about this, because I, and I kind of said them on yesterday's podcast with David, but I'll repeat myself real quick. Here are my things about the 3 I think the 3A is probably the the three XL, pick your choice. It's probably the best pixel you can buy now today, because I think that in six months of its existence, the three and three XL have aged extremely poorly. Yeah. They do not remain competitive as flagship price devices. Now they're on sale all the time, but imagine for a second you're paying the normal price, or so even a hundred or two hundred below the normal price. It's still a way worse piece of hardware than what you can get from competition. And I hope that with the Pixel 4, Google really cranks the hardware game up and possibly even goes more premium because I think it does, I think we all deserve, imagine the computational photography we get on the main camera of the Pixel 3 or 3a, but apply to a three lens phone with really high end hardware sensors and lenses. That's what I want to see. I think the $399 price point of the 3a is serving the majority of people happily. Uh, we have a new guest <laughs> that just arrived. Hi, David. David Hello. Lum, how are you? Great. Uh, happy to be here. How are yeah. you? Um, you want to tell people who you write for? We all know, but... Uh, I'm a mobile editor for Tech Radar. That's right. So David Lum has joined us. One more to the party. We're in the middle of discussing the Pixel 3a, and specifically I was talking about how I feel that the Pixel 4 really needs to crank things up next year in terms of hardware, because I think now the Pixel 3a is the phone that... It's 90% of a Pixel 3 experience for half the price. And most people will be served very well by that. And, the, you know, so what I... 
play devil's advocate for a second. Yeah, yeah. sure. You said something a minute ago. The Pixel 3 and 3XL have aged incredibly poorly I think compared so. to everything else. I think the experience is still there. I okay, I don't the think the experience work. is quite there because I still think it's there's a lot of RAM issues and well, throttling. So when you take on paper, on paper, <laughs> no, no, I mean I say the same. Having used the Pixel Three, it's no matter how good a phone it is, it's still it's still not. You can tell there's a noticeable performance difference if you put it against an S10 that's got double the RAM. Like there's a noticeable performance difference. What happens six months from now when Q comes out when it's about to go and add? all of the assistant stuff when it's about to dump even more and we already know Android is a bit of a ram hog and we it's know it's, it's never not going to it's not going to get any better it's only ever going to get yeah. worse as it tries to do more they're saying this has three years of software updates and don't get me wrong I still think this is the greatest this is the most important phone that will be launched this year from a wider telecommunication like phone's perspective but is that experience like is that, can you tell me, a year, two, three years from now, this is not just going to be really slow and you would expect it to be not that because it's not a phone from your Oppo, your Xiaomi, not that I have anything against them, it's a Pixel. And it's always, and they'll be promoting it as super fast experience, all of these things. Can you tell me two years from now, based on everything we know about the rest of Android in general and all of Google's phone, that it's not just going to suffer the same way that everyone else has. But you're not playing devil's advocate. You're actually agreeing with me. That's kind of where I'm going with this. That's why I think that if Google's going to have a mid-range line and a top of the line line, they need that top of the line to really be top of the line. We need phones with 8, 10, 12 gigs of RAM that cost $1,000, have three lenses, and or make 800 I don't care about the price at this point. I, I actually welcome them to, prime, to, to charge a premium for these phones because maybe they don't want to chase OnePlus and others and go in, in, you know, because they already have the 3A and maybe the 4A after that. So I just, I'm just, as somebody who is an Nexus and Pixel user for a long, long time and, and kind of feels kind of like stuck in it now in a way because I want the latest updates and I love the camera, I feel like I'm not getting the hardware I want. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And, and in fact, I honestly say that right now, because of that, I would wholeheartedly recommend to everyone get a 3A, call it a day. I, I think that's and, better for and, and myself, I might even switch, to be frank, because what do I lose? You know, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, storage and, you know, I, I, you know, I don't play hardcore games, so I won't probably notice performance issues. RAM is the same. Um, in fact, the phone is, if anything, more disposable. I can get another one cheaper if I lose it. And I get a headphone jack back. So and you buy two 3As for a 3. I wouldn't miss yeah. wireless charging. I think that's the one thing. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the water rating, although I'm not, I'm pretty good about not splashing on my phones. But. but one of the things that was interesting to me, and Google iterated this, but we've seen this from multiple OEMs. They've come back and said over and over again, the number one feature that people are looking for in a smartphone is the camera. That's been the case for 10 years that I worked yeah. in retail. Yeah. The and we're still It comes killed. over and over and over again. And the fact that you are giving consumers a flagship tier, not just the can compete with the Galaxy, but the Pixel camera, which over and over has been rated as still the top camera. Yep. You're giving that for $400. You just have to tell people what a pixel is because they still have no clue what it is. And that's part of the problem. And that's the problem, problem right? right? Yeah. But the fact that they're getting it into three carriers is gonna it's gonna help a lot. And knowing how the pixel went to Verizon, every time you walked into a Verizon store, they were wearing a Google Pixel shirt and pushing the pixel. If they can do that at eight, yeah, it's not going to AT and T. T-Mobile and Sprint. I was going to say, you said three. What about U.S. Cellular? <laughs> <laughs> the, here's the thing that I think a lot of people have missed when it comes to the 3A. It's not about the U.S. market. The U.S. market is so secondary, it's unreal. The 3A is for every one of those developing markets where the Pixel 3 was just too damn expensive. But then it's four hundred dollars. But I, price I, range. I disagree. That with that. Price range I mean, is you take it too high, high, way too high that's for too India high and South America. No, no, I disagree. In Europe, no. though, it'll sell. Europe, no, I disagree. You 
if there are people aspiring to own Galaxy S10s and all of those other devices for all of the cameras and everything it can offer in India, and they are 60, 70, 80,000 rupees, this thing is priced at 35, I think I read earlier. To most people in developing, we're not talking about the super, you know, your farmer who can't afford, that's where Android probably isn't, that's Android, where you're looking at Android iOS. Device. Yeah. Or go. I'm talking about the people in these developing markets who want a phone, but you are talking about these markets where, to us, eight hundred dollars is you know it's fine. It's not a jump change, but it's pretty much a jump change yeah. to them. It's a few months worth of salary. salary yeah. Here yeah. you're cutting it in half. I would agree with that. Except I think so. for one one point, and that is that Google still isn't shipping pixels in most developing markets. It's it's they're it's they're, not like South America. I said that, but they're not shipping there. For yeah, they're they're only shipping to what like thirty Eight countries. Thirty two. Yeah, the something only like one. That. I, so yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's the low thirties. Yeah. yeah, India is the only one I can think of right now that's really in that list of developing countries. I I think you make a good point though. It's kind of the halo effect, right? They can't afford an S ten. They can't afford like. Like a, uh, maybe not even a OnePlus 7 Pro, whatever, whatever the pricing is going to be on that. But they might say, and they might, they might hear about the Pixel and say, I want that. But now they get a Pixel they can actually afford, right? With the camera. Correct. Being the most important and thing. they get that camera. I yeah. take somewhere else on the Dubai. Clearly, yes. For the most people in Dubai, your Pixel 3, your Galaxy S10 is fine. Mm-hmm. But for everyone in that second tier of... Life is the best way to put it because it's so. It, there's two. There's almost very determined well, tiers in yeah, very class in some, It's yeah, very yeah. class centric in Dubai for people who quite can't quite afford it. And you know there are going to be expats out there who don't want to spend two grand on an iPhone. Don't want to spend fifteen hundred dollars on the Pixel, but they'll buy one of these at seven. And I think the US market is a weird exception because people. Like, don't buy the phones for full price. They walk mm-hmm. in and subsidize them 20 bucks a month. Yeah. 20 bucks a month is four espressos in San Francisco, five espressos in New York, and well, you know, seven espressos in Denver. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's like... A gigabit we, internet connection in Romania, just who, just to provide context right. there. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think that, that... So in that sense, I agree with you. But I do think they do have an opportunity in the US for this. I agree entirely as well. But the other thing was, I forget I mentioned it earlier, but in Europe... This won't sell anywhere near as well as they potentially want it to because there's so much competition. Yeah. That that's said, you walk problem. into a car from a warehouse right now, buy one of those at 399 quid, they're giving you a 200 pound car from warehouse voucher. And the other side of the Pixel 3a, which I think is going to be quite key, is you will, we we'll, we'll won't see much discounts on the Pixel 3 anymore. Now everything is just going to be, look, we will we will throw money behind the promotions and the discounts on the Pixel 3a because we can. But you also don't want a Pixel 3 or 3 Excel at this point. As I, I made that point. No, right I agree clear, entirely. Right? So, David, I want to know real quick, since you walked in, we started by kind of sharing what were the topics that, what was the one thing that stood out for us at I.O.? And of course, I want you to share that if you have one thing. For me, it was Pixel 3a. Uh, but we're going to go back talking about a system, which was my best second choice, and we're going to talk about some of the other topics, but I want to know what you think. What is your thing that stood out for you so far? Uh, since you named a, a bunch of the ones I had already, uh, I'll say accessibility. Yeah, um, we haven't it? talked about that yet. Yeah, you did? No, we haven't. Oh, cool. I, I talked about it with David on yesterday's <laughs> show, but not in this particular show. So I, I just, I'm late because I went hunting around seeing if anyone would talk about it. Unfortunately, it's it's too far in the future. Um, we already we already have live transcribe, but the one we uh, got shown today is live caption, or shown yesterday. Yeah, that's amazing to me. Yeah. That's going to change the game. Apple's going to have to come up with something similar. I mean, Apple has some of the best accessibility uh, features right now on iOS. Yeah, it's known for. If you talk to anyone who has a disability, regardless of disability, they'll tell you that. But, and Android's always been a little behind, but to me, I'm not saying it's gonna change the game for Google getting ahead, but I feel like they're gonna be able to capture a lot of interest with this caption system, because imagine being able to caption anything that happens on your phone, in real time, all the time, it doesn't matter, voicemail, anything. Did they elaborate as to where the technology is coming from? Is this pulled from their captioning on YouTube? Because they've been they you know they took away transcriptions on YouTube because they went through the you know their artificial intelligence captioning. Like, is this the same thing, or are they pulling it from somewhere else with you know I don't know recognition or something? Like yeah, that? it's definitely part of like a like an NLP sort of like language uh, like language transcribing 
whatever. You know, it's it's on the system. Uh, the other thing I thought was amazing is uh, it's it's not um, ported back and forth. You don't need to know connection. It's yeah. on your phone. Right? Yeah, that, that's what we were talking about earlier. That yeah. 80 megabytes. That's how big the file yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. amazing. Right. Yeah. 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 So uh, they, the person I talked to didn't elaborate much beyond that about like where it was coming from. Um, I can only imagine having it centralized within Android is, is far superior than to just uh, having it you know, bolstered on some server. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I kind of want to, I think maybe wrap up the Pixel 3 conversation. We can always sure. come back to that. I mean, the, the podcast is really, I don't want it to have too much order. I want a bit of chaos, but you haven't said anything about the Pixel 3a. So what's your thought on it? Um, I agree that it's that the four is going to need to do something spectacular uh, because the three is, the three A is as stripped down as you can get. That's the price you're paying for decent specs, but really the camera. So if I feel like this gives the four A a lot of space to um, do what we've always wanted it to do, which is add a second camera uh, to to really uh, bolster use the um, the software with something some really impressive lenses. Yeah, uh, everyone is loving ultra wide cameras. Now, can we get that? You already put one on the. I, I definitely That's want nice. two more cameras. Yeah. I, I think you cannot do a flagship without a wide and a tele now. So I think you're you're right there. Like digging themselves a hole, but also like we now know they they have admitted that this is the value of basically all the good parts of Pixel. So I think it's great because it does give a cheaper option that's going to undercut you know, yeah. what everyone's been saying about OnePlus for years. Cetera, yeah, cetera. absolutely. I feel the only criticism I have, I still think that 400 is too high. So to me, it's like you look, at, you look at the device as it is now and at the price as it is now, and one of them is wrong. Yeah. And to me, for the device, if I keep the price at 400, what's wrong is plastic. And wireless charging. I would go for metal and glass build with wireless charging. I think they can achieve that at a price point. You can buy an Honor 8X for two hundred dollars from Huawei. They can. That does, does that. That does that. So there's no reason. So the other thing is you could do the reverse. Keep it the way it is and drop it down to three hundred. I think three fifty would be a pretty for for the North American and Western markets. Three fifty should be the sweet spot. And I feel that seventy more for the bigger one is silly because the only thing is the display size and the battery. I would go to like 50 more so for 350 and 400 is what i would price these and hopefully that'll happen within a few weeks <laughs> uh we'll see but uh i, I mean honestly i don't i, really, if, I still if, don't if think they start selling they won't drop i price. still don't think it's going to be a, a, a great seller i, I don't want to the marketing is not there we well we don't know yet if, if it all depends if they might decide if we're going to put Five hundred million dollars behind this for a marketing campaign and push it. We don't know. But like, it went out yesterday. The marketing campaign's not here. I told you. I saw banners down the freeway today. Oh, you did. Well, to be yeah. fair, they did the same thing with the Pixel Three. They had it on talk shows. They had people shooting magazine covers with it. And well, they said the worst music. selling they Pixel since an M M music video. Right? video mm -hmm. in New they York. had the yeah. Pixel Three on on Avengers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. it's still mm -hmm. like it sold worse than the Pixel Two. So the money they yeah, had right. marketing and putting well, things up point. on the side of the freeway doesn't necessarily make a difference. Yeah. It's a tough one. I, I think that, look, I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of Pixel. I continue carrying a main Pixel as my main daily driver. And I am probably going to switch to the 3 for a bit. But after that, I might switch to whatever OnePlus brings us or something. Because I feel like I'm not getting what I want in terms of hardware from Google. I love the experience. I love the camera. I love getting all the updates and all these great features. But... Like I want, like I want a choice of lenses. I want like a massive amounts of performance. I want to be able to run every app on my phone all the time without any switching and running out of RAM. Like four gears of RAM. Like come on. Yeah. You know, it's you just said something that sums up how I feel about the three, the regular three and three XL. Yeah. We called it the greatest camera phone. Oh, I called it that as well. Probably better but, to call it the greatest camera. The Mate 20 Pro came out, ran it close. And I was still like, this is good. Exactly. And then I went, oh, wait, this is what you can buy from a Huawei for yeah. the same for, for the same price. Ultimately yeah. the same price. And I was like, the even, the hard even with three up. cameras, even with three cameras, they're going to need to do some insane software stuff, not just to do the night side, because it's no longer about that. It's about the... The five, the ten, the fifty. You're good. They, there is. I think Google definitely agreeing with what you said earlier needs to realize that software alone does not replace hardware. But you see, and I think that's what they're not going to realize, and that's why the marketing is not going to follow. Because Google is like Apple, 
is in that mindset that the hardware doesn't matter. It's just a portal into the experience, the silo, the ecosystem, and the software. And I think that's a true in many, many ways. For many things, that is true. Yeah, but when job. you're at the price points and the flagship level we're talking about with the power users that we are and that a lot of our listeners and readers and viewers are, you need way more than that. You need a hardware that can live up to that experience. And Apple does that. Apple does have you know, a really high-end phone and then they also have a more affordable phone. Well, to be fair, Google well, is kind of succeeding in one place where Apple failed. Like, everyone, Wall Street Journal, The Verge, was praising the XR when it launched as the new mid-range yeah. success story, and, and it wasn't. And then Google comes out with the Pixel 3a that is actually mid-range pricing. Yeah. It's probably yeah. going to succeed where Apple and the XR failed. But I mean, I you wouldn't see, buy an XR or a 3a. The, exactly. Never. The 10R to me is actually still a flagship great phone. Exactly. It's like the te- it's like the S ten E from Samsung. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal phone it, for the money. It is phone. really the one I recommend to most people, right? Mm-hmm. And I think the 10R is the one people recommend to most people. And and I mean, you know, mileage may vary a little, but I think general the consensus seems in the media to be that. But for and of course the three A is what we recommend for Pixel because it brings ninety percent of the value for fifty percent of the cost, right? So I, but I still think we need something better from I think it'll be interesting to see, like, in, in two months, what happens. Because, like, we can talk now, and we don't know what Google's actually going to do for the marketing campaign. We don't know what the general consumer's reaction is going to be. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a feeling for what that is. But in, in two months, we could, like, all be completely wrong about all of it. Because you, you never know. Like, yeah. I mean, I think general consumers, outside of the enthusiast sphere... If they know anything about a Pixel, they know about the camera. And I think that it's very smart for Google to say, hey, that, that camera that you've heard everybody else using on these really quick phones that we put out that you don't have yet, we have it here for half the price. So if they buckle down on that, if, if that's their marketing message, yeah. being in more carrier stores, at least here in the US, where people might actually care about that, that's going to be a big leg up for them. So I don't know. I think it could do well. I don't know. As with anything, Google, like, they, they promise the world, and then somehow they get in their own way. Uh, so I, I kind of expect that from, from the 3A as well. For sure. Well, we told you it was going to be loud. I yeah. hope you're, uh, you know this now. I'm not sure I'm going to get most of that out, but I did it last year, so I'll figure it out. Well, that, this is exactly the same thing as we did at the, at the bonus podcast of Iowa last year. It, it tells uh, listeners where we you are. Think right? I have learned a the, lesson to not do the second podcast on the second day, right before the concert. But uh, yeah, it's like totally maxing out the bass right now. But uh, um, it'd be nice to have a little cut filter in that mic, eh? Built in. <laughs> that would really help. Yeah. I but I'll do it in, soft, in, in software. It's fine. Um, anyway, so I want to talk about maybe more about the assistant a little bit. Uh, what are you most excited about that you saw? I mean, they're going to be rolling this out in phases, right? Yeah. I mean, so putting Google Assistant on the device rather than having it in the cloud, I don't think it's going to be coming to every device because they said it will be coming to our next device. So I don't think it's going to be something that's retroactive, going to be able to get installed on the Galaxy S10 or even the current Pixels because I think they're going to have to do it from the underlying framework and putting something in that's a half a gigabyte is massive when you're reinstalling it on a device. Yeah. Um, So, I mean... Don't look forward to it on the current phone you have. You're going to probably have to get the Pixel 4. It'll probably be the Pixel 4, and maybe by 2020, maybe a couple other phones if the OEMs buy into it. But the fact that you won't have that network latency anymore in order to get an answer from Google Assistant, you can say, well, for me, one of the things is going to be being able to tell Google, Google Assistant something for my smart home, and it does it immediately without that two and a half, three second delay. Uh, yes. Because right now, it, it does it off of the Wi-Fi system, and it, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to go through and talk to the cloud, but the Assistant does in order just to recognize your command, and then it's going over your Wi-Fi. Not having that, that's going to be amazing. You I say, mean, turn on the lights, and boom, it's done. I think it's going to be great. And I love how they're displaying the recognition and the bar at the yeah, bottom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, how, that, that how cool. do they continue that if they switch to the full gesture where everything yeah. gets compressed down there? There's no room for that anymore. But I loved what when they were showing that little preview. Yeah. Like, yeah. have that. 
yeah. somewhere. So you could see it somewhere. Yeah, I mean, they might be able to do it at the top or, you know, like, yeah, yeah. while Hopefully they're doing the new, new, you know, contextual mm-hmm. bubble pop-ups, it might, mm-hmm. you know, they might use something like that. I don't think it's fully baked yet. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll have to see when Q, like the way Q comes the, out. Yeah. The biggest deal about the new assistant stuff wasn't just the fact that it was able to do all of the on-device vocal recognition, but the deep integration control it had of the phone. Yeah. The fact that he was talking well, was the, the, the auto-filling all of that information and being able to interact with the apps at a much deeper level with all the new APIs, the app action stuff that's being rolled out. That's the big deal. The fact that you can you can control it with your voice, not that your voice is on device. It, it was really just like uh, assistant does Bixby, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so for me, the most phenomenal part was when he she was saying compose the email and started composing the email, and then she said put the title of the email to subject this. line, subject line, line. and, and then she had a, a pause, and then she continued dictation of the email, and it jumped from dictating the email to the subject, and then back to dictating the email without a specific command to jump back. And it picked up punctuation. Yeah. And, oh, so here's, yeah. here's the interesting yeah. part of it, because I am I love the demo, but I, you know, I had a conversation with the AC podcast yesterday, not trying to plug, don't worry, it's just, this is very specific. You're allowed because... to plug, Narav, at the end, though. Okay, but no, but this was, this is a very specific point of what we were discussing, but all of these features, re- well, all of, everything they were showing requires probably one thing, the use of all of Google services. Now, this is great. We've already discussed how Pixel phones are the microcosm in terms of a percentage compared to the wider Android space. If there's two and a half billion Android phones out there, Pixel probably makes up two and a half million yeah. across the life, including Nexus, including everything else. What happens if you have a Galaxy S11? Samsung's put their own gallery in. They've got their own email app, or I'm using my separate email app. They're doing all of this. They're doing all of that. They've got Bixby on the phone. Then what happens if you've got a Huawei phone? It's got its own NPU. It's got its own AI stuff under the hood. It's got its own apps. It's got all of that. You don't want to go into Google Photos. You want into Gallery. Yeah, the demo is cool, but we are a long, long, long way from being anything like it showed in the demo in the real world. And that's because unless you buy a Pixel, and this might be their game plan. Yeah, exactly. You want all of this? You want to see what happens when you buy the Google experience? Yeah. This is what happens. It's a the, selling point for Pixel. The right. caveat on the, all of this is, I had this conversation in the press lounge yesterday. If my takeaway is, if Google continues down the path of, hey, you need to have all of these Google services, you've got to be really in on Google, and you guys are just hardware manufacturers. This is the new Play Edition, by the way. This is the new, like, five years later. What happens if you look at the combined value of a Huawei, a Samsung, BBK, so Oppo, all of those guys, if they just turn around and go, we're tired of Google, because they've got collectively enough money and enough clout and enough devices to go out there and build their own version of the place to pay enough money to put that behind there. I think we are reaching a camp, a caveat point, and they could do it all off AOSP and make the thing look exactly like Android, but it's not under the well, control. It's not Google's Android. Android. It's not Google's yeah, Android. It's, it's this AOSP. is what concerns me. We might reach a point where Google, like the three A, has the ability to go and take out. You know, it could it could eat the biscuit of LG now because LG's phone business. is already dying, but it's really close to it. If you're looking at something like a three A, same with Sony now. They're, they're reaching that point where I'm a little concerned about just how what the future of Android truly looks like when you look at how its partners might react to a lot of this stuff. They'll, they'll accept it oh. in the immediate future, but we know that Samsung has ties and we know Huawei has its own OS. Yeah, but I think that I mean in this that that we had that same concern two mm-hmm. three years back and nothing came out of it. Like yeah. I'll give you an example. My mom uh, needed a new phone. She had like an old Galaxy S of some kind, and she then upgraded to a, like a really crappy mid range Galaxy, like super plasticky. And I was like, Mom, you had a Galaxy S two or something. Why did you go to like a mid range? She was well, I didn't want to spend the money, and they said it was a good phone. It was a total turd. <laughs> so I finally said, Look. And you need a new phone. I'm going to be in town. I was for MWC last year, 2018. And I said, I have some ideas of what we should get. And let's see what your operator has, because I know you want to stay in contract with them and get a discount. 
And so we went and they, I got her like a Huawei, uh, I don't know, it was an Honor, Honor 8 Lite or something like that. It was awesome. But I turned it into a Pixel. I disabled all the apps that were Huawei apps, completely removed them. I put all the Google ecosystem on it because she uses it. And I made it basically as close as I could to her Galaxy by also removing any Samsung-centric stuff that wasn't pigeonholing her, right? She thankfully she hadn't like invested in like a Samsung account or anything like that. And it was an amazing experience turning that phone. It was quite feasible, number one. I pretty much succeeded in doing it. And I taught her, I said, look, you know, text messaging app look to her was gonna be different no matter what, because the text message app messages, that was what I put on there, is gonna be different than Galaxy messages, right? Like no matter what you do. But I didn't want her to be kind of in a place where two years from now, when she's by herself and she goes and buys a Vivo or an Oppo or whatever, that she has another, like now she can like do a backup and restore and get all the Google apps back and all her settings back, right? She's gonna have all this plethora of apps she'll have to disable. I can take care of the next time I see her. So I think there's actually some benefits to being under equal, under, under the Google I know I don't have to tell you on that, well, but I'm just saying for the average person, you know? Talking about the average person, someone like my mother. You know, she uses, I asked her, she was like, I need a new phone. And this is going to go back to three. This is all kind of relevant. She ultimately went, yeah, I don't email. I just need two apps or three apps on that. Facebook. Facebook, WhatsApp. And I also need an outstanding camera. Do you know what I gave her? I gave her my P20 Pro. Oh, wow. I gave her my P20 Wait, Pro. I thought it didn't work anymore. No, I actually got it working. Oh, again. you got it working again? Rice is an amazing... Anyone just think, rice works when you're... You've got to leave it in there for like a week and then it just resolved itself perfectly. Cool. And she still uses Facebook, WhatsApp, and the camera. And that is it. And she uses... And she needs nothing else. So if we're talking... Like, even your mother... I, I agree. We're all geeks. Average Joe doesn't need 99.999% yeah. of the stuff in the Play Store that... You give them something that's got, and it, as long as it yeah. works and they can do what they want with it, it doesn't matter that it's got Google services. So my question is right now, though, would you give her the Pixel 3a instead? Yeah, I would. No. No? No. Why not? Because I still think the P20 Pro has a, will have a... She, in terms of what she uses okay. like for the camera, just off the camera, the Pixel 3a camera is outstanding, there's no doubt about it. But, much like Miriam's discussion of the Pixel 4... I, my mum loves the versatility of the different lenses. So uh, she's hooked with that now, huh? She, that, as soon as, and my sister bought one purely off the ability of the five time zoom when we, when I zoomed into a wine bottle for her and why it really appealed to my sister, by the way, she has really, really bad eyesight. She's got her numbers minus 15. She had like 15 operations by the age of 10. So she actually uses the zoom feature because her eyes cannot see that. Right. And there is nothing that will replace the physical hardware of being able to zoom in at that. Yeah. And that's what that's an accessibility which no one would have ever seen. That, oh, I'm going to use the camera to zoom in because I physically cannot see that. Yeah. Apparently, Davis got to run. Yeah, yeah, I got to go. Sorry, guys. Uh, no no, now you're making an exit, Davis. It was a nice meeting you. So, David, where can we find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me at Tech Radar. Uh, just search for David Lum, um, or you can find me on Twitter at Out on a Lum. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay, Narav, continue. There's no concern right now. I'm just thinking about way down the line where Google's been going over the last few. You know, this is a company that was all about search, all about services, and it was like we're here to help everybody. Oh, look at Android, it's great. But now everything's made by Google, or Google this, or Google that. It's such a branding exercise, and it works, but ultimately, I'm a little concerned about four or five years from now, what's gonna happen. Pushing out the competition. They, they start, the 3A is gonna knock a couple of, knock a few of its partners out of the water, out of the business. They're gonna, it's gonna change. There are gonna be people in, a, in certain Asian countries awake all night because of this phone. Because of, not because of what they're going to do for marketing, it's because it's like, whoa, where is, what's next? What, what, how do we react to this? Are we, do we need to cut prices? Do we, it's going to change a lot of their partners. Those same partners 
maybe not the exact same partners, but an annoy enough people, annoy enough people, they will rise back up against you. It it is the fun. I think it is inevitable that there are going to be. We'll probably never hear about it. Some very, very, very choice words between Google and his partners, with its partners going, "We're not happy about." Because they did that with the smart displays, and they went, "Oh, hey, Lenovo, you do that. Oh, now we're going to do this." Ultimately, no matter what they say, Google is very much a hardware company as well, and it's oh, they're taking, in my opinion, they're kind of taking the Amazon approach. Amazon lets people sell everything, sees what's doing well, and goes, "Can we do it ourselves for cheaper?" Great, we will. We'll stop selling your stuff, and we'll do that. And then you take Google's going like, "Well, we'll let it's, our partners do everything." Let them come up with all new ideas. We like that. We're going to go for it. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Nothing new about it. But I don't think any of us around this table want to see a world where we are limited, where we are shrinking the market, shrinking yeah. the number of competition, the amount of competition. I love Android because there's four billion manufacturers out there. Yeah. Exaggeration, but the point is there. One of the one of the things I found really interesting, though, you're talking about the partners and having choice conversations. A lot of OEM partners are here this week because of I.O. and they're having meetings with Google this week because of I.O. and they're like, I want like I want to be in those meetings like what the heck is this? You're trying to like put it like the pixel's one thing, competing on the high end for, for a device, but this is a mass market device, as you said, that could knock a couple OEMs off of their pegs. Like, I don't know, it, it's gonna be interesting. I love that we started with the pixel and then we moved to the assistant and the assistant got us in a discussion about how how potentially things could change in the entire Android ecosystem because of this super tight integration that comes to the pixel devices first. I, I do feel that Google has traditionally done this where they release first features first on Nexus and Pixel and on the latest version of the US and eventually it does trickle down. Yeah, I can't think that. of any feature that doesn't eventually trickle down. It's uh, not a wireless problem. Android Auto. It's not a... Well, wireless Duplex. Android Auto has trickled I love that. Duplex, it, but, yeah. yeah. Duplex it's, is another one that I think, but it's, I'm but, sure it's going to spread. But it hasn't trickled down yet. Yes. It's yes. not about trickling down though. That's It's not about the trickling down part of it. It's more about the, yeah, it's available to everybody, but hey, if you want to do that, fine, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to use these services, you've got to hook in. And I'm going to go to what you want to talk about, Mainline. Mm -hmm. With Mainline, it is a fundamental, they, the reason they've got the buy-in from everybody, because it's now part of the terms of installing the Play Store. Do you have certification requires? You have to do this, you have to do this, you have to, they have so much control that at what point do you go, it's too much control? At what point do we, we're not going to get, I mean, it's great for us overall. What point do the partners go, we need to find something else? And I've had conversations with Huawei in China that have involved going, we have alternative plans just in case of this specific, of the scenario that there is too much control. Because it won't be long before Google goes, hey, by the way, if you want to do all this great integration, well, you need to keep the nav bar the same because this is the only place we're allowing you to put those assistant commands. Oh, and the next step, you know, now I'm hyper-theorizing, but yeah. hey, we could go, right, oh, and if you want to do this, well, you need to use this particular UI set. Oh, look, every Android phone is going to look the same. You're allowed to make hardware. Well, there's one thing that could mitigate this, and that is that the EU has already stricken down a bunch of the stuff that Google tried to do with these tight integrations. They've made sure that there, there is competition. They're not allowed to make certain services default anymore. Like... There is a degree of oversight that's happening that directly contradicts most of that and that will continue to just in the EU. Which is a big enough part. But if it's happening in the EU, they have yeah. to comply globally because yeah. they can't make a different version yeah. of Android it's for the hard. EU. This is true. Like, so the EU, like everything else, anytime the EU starts making specific regulation, it... Yeah. it becomes a global regulation and, and because I they're do. so big. And Same with California for like yeah. automotive yeah, stuff. Exactly. California, you set a standard in California, sets the standards it for the standard world. for the US. And the well, world. Well, yeah. Many ways, because it's too expensive. 
But no, you make a good point. I think that any smart company like, you know, any of the big players right now, Samsung and, and Huawei in particular, have to have a plan B OS. And you know, Tizen exists and etc. But I don't feel it's going to get to that. Like, I, I really don't think Google also doesn't necessarily want that to happen. I, I still think that Google is very committed to being open because an OS is just a means to an end for them. Right? They, don't, do. they don't want to own the device side of it necessarily. I don't, I'm not convinced they do. Let me just quickly say something. No matter what I've said, I love what Google's doing. I, oh, me I too. adore yeah, what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to be the uh, open the, minded, the right? cynic yeah. of a lot of this to go, no, this is my natural nature to go, where could this lead? Because there are a few, we're going to appeal to the seven people in the world who are like, well, what about this and that and the other? Yeah. I've seen, but yeah, I love what they're doing. I ultimately. I, I mean, no, ultimately, the fact that O exists and they are so open with us media to roam around this place and talk to people. I mean, you know, Apple shoots people out after the keynote. You can't stick around. I mean, that to me shows that Google is still highly invested. And you, saw, you see how much open source stuff they are both contributing to and using. And I think in that sense that, you know, in the same way as Microsoft is super open source now, it just makes sense for a company to do that. And so I don't think it's all going to go away all of a sudden that Huawei and Samsung have to worry about it. I it might not fit so. their business plan and their strategy, and that's a whole different thing. That's on them. But I don't think it's Google going to be like, nope. Because that's exactly why the Pixel exists, because Google has like, this is our vision. This is our experience. This is how we want it. And you can, they can each do their own creation of that. Yeah. And I'm not entirely sure that Google's big plan here or ever has been, we want to be the only choice that everybody chooses. No. They just, they have a version of their OS that works on a version of their phone that that is more tailored to their services than any other platform. But they're still, you know, they still offer plenty to other OEMs to, to make their own customizations within, you know, within rules those, that the EU is, cra- is cracking within down certain on. Realms I, think it takes, I think it takes a huge shift for someone like Huawei to say, well, screw Android, we're going to do our own thing. Maybe that happens five years down the line if and when Google says, hey, we're not doing Android anymore, we're transitioning to this new thing. Maybe then that ends up being the mar- the market point in the, in, the, in the road that makes a company like Huawei say, okay, see, we had a reason that we were developing this. Now is our opportunity to say maybe it makes sense to do this instead of go in this new direction. Yeah. But I don't think this is it. And if I, you arguably, I'm saying many years. Just to clarify, I did say multiple times. Yeah. Many yeah. years down the line, yeah, this yeah. is like well into the future of 10, 15 years from now. It's nothing to do with the here and now. And the here and now is Google will always offer their version of this, the Pixel Experience or the Google Launcher, or the next whatever you know, the same thing under different names, and then you'll have. The ability to do everything like this, but if they start to do things like market the on device of the assistant and look at how, and the marketing is just look how effortless this is. Yeah. It's going to push people into the, well, if I want that, this is what I want. And that's where it's like it, their hardware is what's going to ultimately benefit. It's like, I mean, you can argue that if you go to China and you buy a phone from China, like an Oppo or a Vivo, even a, a Huawei. An honor phone there, you don't you don't even get close to a Google experience, right? right. No, because you don't have to play so store. and yet it's still running Android. You can still sideload the apps and without Google Play Services, half of it won't work, right? So that I think they already have their plan B. It's already happening, you know, in many ways. That's kind of how I feel about it. But anyway, listen, I think we should wrap it up because it's only going to get louder. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. The, the, the drink is moving uh, across the table. Is the well, it's because rattles. the entire room is at an angle. Uh, it's like a temporary room outside. Um, uh, why don't you start, Nick, by telling people where they can find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on the internet uh, personally on Twitter, uh, Nick M. Gray on Twitter, but uh, all the Android news that we cover on fandroid.com, uh, you can find me there. What about you, Ryan? Uh, people can find me at androidpolice.com, and if they figure out how to spell Ryan Hager, they can follow me at that handle on Twitter. <laughs> All right, there you go. 
And yeah, like, in plan. case you're wondering, Ryan is the person that keeps David in check. <laughs> I mean, I does any do that? By the way, we love product, but does anyone keep product in check? Yeah, is that even possible? I was going to say. <laughs> uh, Jason, where can they find you? Uh, well, you can find Twit. And we have a number of shows. Twit.tv. All about Android is Twit.tv slash AAA. And then I'm on Twitter at Jason Howell. Fantastic. What about you, Nirav? You can find me over at technobuffalo.com. I'm also on AndroidCentral.com occasionally and all the other mobile nation sites and at Nirav, N-I-R-A-V-E on Twitter. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, just throw a G at the end of it. Nirav G. Yes. All right. Well, you folks know where to find me. I'm at Tankgirl. That's T-N-K-G-R-L on Twitter, on Instagram as well. Uh, there's a YouTube channel that goes with the podcast at YouTube.com slash Miriam Joir. If you know how to spell my name, as Ryan would say. Actually, my name is spelled on the Twitter. So go to the Twitter and then spell out my name and put it at the end of YouTube.com and you'll get the channel for, uh, for the podcast. MobileTechPodcast.com, of course. We're on all the major podcasting platforms. You can search for it there. And then, uh, yeah, I want to thank our sponsor, Audible. Audible.com is a great place to get books. If you can't read, you're driving a car all day, you're a delivery person or something. The American Education System yeah. failed you. Well, exactly. So you want to maybe have a, you know, have a great uh, experience uh, having books read to you. Audible is a really the place to go, I think. It's my, actually the, probably the number one app I install. I think it's it's a, it's a great platform. So uh, check it out if you want a special deal. There's a 30-day free trial that supports the podcast. So uh, go to audibletrial.com slash mobile tech. That's audibletrial.com slash mobile tech. And you'll get a 30-day free trial that will help the podcast out and support us. So if you're not already an Audible member and you want to have books read to you or you're a big bookworm, but sometimes you can't physically read a book for whatever reason, there you're choice. Uh, thanks for being sponsors Audible and thanks to all you uh, for being on the show. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, yes. good time. So um, stay tuned for another show next week and until then, cheers everybody. This has been the Mobile Tech Podcast with Tank Girl proudly presented by worldpodcasts.com You can visit us online at mobiletechpodcast.com